Welcome back to our course on GPS. We're just starting on module one, trying to give you a little bit of a feeling for what is GPS, why do we care about it so deeply, and how are we going to organize the course. Here's an outline of our first five snippets. Professor Van Diggelen has already talked to you about the overall outline of the course, and he nicely organized that around the various functions uh, that GPS performs, both to operate nominally and to operate to provide uh, better accuracy, better sensitivity, and so forth. Today I'll talk a little bit about my view about uh, how GPS works. Once again, just a very quick snippet to give you a feeling and then give you my feelings about why GPS is so important. So that will be module 1.2. Frank will come back, talk about uh, the simplicity and beauty of GPS in module 1.3. Uh, and then I'll come back and talk about how this course will be structured in terms of the outline and the prerequisites that we require for this course. This really is a course that's best suited for people who have a strong undergraduate exposure to technical uh, matters. And then finally, module or snippet 1.5 will give the actual scores, course schedule and talk about some specific things like uh, the laboratories that we're uh, eager to expose you to, uh, the books that are available, the uh, chat site that's available, and so forth. So with that, let's hop ahead. As I mentioned, Professor Van Diggelen has already given you a course outlined by function. I'll talk a little bit about my view of uh, the how and why of G GPS, and it begins with this picture. So um, here are all the essential elements of GPS. There are some 30 satellites up there today from the GPS system, the US system. And there are an additional 30 satellites or so uh, from uh, Russia and Europe put together, and then an additional 15, 16 satellites from China, and then a few others from Japan and India. So all told, we're pushing uh, 80 satellites or so. But uh, what we show here in the upper right, the red clock, is a single satellite. So we're just taking a single satellite perspective here. And we need that satellite to broadcast a radio signal at a known transmission time. That's element number one. And for that transmission time, we also must know the location of the satellite. After all, we're going to calculate ranges from the satellite, the red clock, down to the user, the green clock, and for those ranges to have meaning in a uh, reference frame that works well for the user, we also have to know where the satellite is in that user frame, in, in that reference frame. Element number three is the radio wave propagating from the satellite to the user. That's element number three. Uh, we need that to be reasonably close to the speed of light. A few perturbations relative to the speed of light are, are fine. Uh, we model those or we have techniques to remove them but we do count on it being reasonably close. And then finally, element number four, in terms of this one satellite to user description of GPS is the measurement of the time of arrival by the user. And that's the green uh, clock down there on the left. So with those four elements, we can develop the pseudo range equation, which is shown in the gray box. And uh, I won't take you through uh, all of it right now, but I ask you to become increasingly familiar with it as the modules progress. And uh, we'll go through it term by term. The key thing there in the equation tau and the supporting equation d is that within lie what we call the estimanda. And that is the x, u, y, u, z, u. And x, u, y, u, z, u describe the location of the user. And we would like to solve for that. In addition, in the top equation, you see BU. <clears throat> and BU is the clock offset of the user clock relative to GPS system time. So all the satellites shown, let's say, in red uh, are synchronized to each other. So they share a common time base. But the green clock, the user clock, is by design, by necessity, inexpensive. So we have to solve for the clock offset between green and red. So in fact, we have four things that we have to solve for. BU, XU, YU, ZU. 
The rest of those variables in the gray box we hope are either reliably provided or something that we can estimate based on auxiliary information available to the user. So that's the overall picture of how GPS works. And um, <clears throat> please know that you have to repeat that green to red link for some four or five satellites in view. The four or five make sense because we're solving for the four unknowns, X, U, Y, U, Z, U, V, U. So in a nutshell, that's how GPS works. <clears throat> Why do I care about it so deeply? Uh, I am, in my heart, uh, an environmentalist. And in 1989, any doubt I had about working on navigation or not was uh, wiped out when the Exxon Valdez ran aground in William Sound uh, in Alaska and spilled 11 million gallons of oil into the Prince William Sound. This was just a terrible event for the uh, environment of Alaska, and the after effects are still felt today, some 25 years later. So that's, uh, I'm a navigator, I'm a navigation engineer. Um, the other great care I have uh, has to do with the navigation of airplanes. <clears throat> and here we uh, show uh, an airplane traveling up the Gastineau Channel. The Gastineau Channel leads from uh, the Seattle direction up to the city of Juneau, Alaska. And Juneau is shown there in the upper left. I'll highlight it here for you so you can see it. It's right there. And the airplane is traveling up the Gastineau Channel, which it would like to do because the alternate route into Juneau goes around this island here. And to follow that route requires quite a bit more fuel and quite a bit more time and makes you more sensitive to inclement weather. Well, in Alaska, inclement weather is a fact of life, so it's nice if you can uh, come up with a navigation system that allows you to fly down this narrow channel. By the way, the height of these mountains on the side is on the order of 5,000 feet, and this drawing is to scale. That height is, in fact, a reasonable fraction of the width of the entire channel. So it's a very narrow channel, and if the weather is such that the clouds are down to 1,000 feet or 500 feet, this channel was impassable before GPS. But today, people fly into Juneau, Alaska, uh, many flights a day based on GPS guidance down this narrow channel, <clears throat> even when it's packed with fog and clouds. So that's uh, another uh, core part of my care about GPS, and uh, I hope it's one that you get excited about. I'll mention it uh, going forward in this course, but please know it's a very narrow application area for GPS, and uh, Professor Van Diggelen will expose you to uh, GPS applications that are based simply on your smartphone and uh, are there for all kinds of uh, very much everyday applications and not quite as uh, demanding as navigating ships at sea or airplanes down narrow channels. <clears throat> One final look ahead uh, that's close to the, uh, my heart is when we use GPS for safety critical applications like those two I just mentioned, it's important to monitor it and make sure that everything about GPS is going properly. Like any complicated system, it does have glitches, uh, bugs every once in a while. They are extremely rare uh, on the order of once a year. Even so, if we're landing airplanes or guiding ships using GPS, we do monitor it independently, and that's what you see over here on the left. These two antennas are looking at the same GPS satellite signals as the approaching aircraft. <clears throat> and if any corrections are required or any warnings are required, the master station on the ground uses these signals to figure out what those warnings and corrections are and broadcasts them up to the aircraft. This concept is called differential GPS. It targets the improvement in the accuracy of GPS from, let's say, around 10 meters down to around 1 meter. 
and it appears in multiple guises, multiple uh, versions of this are in the commercial community today. They're used for aviation, for maritime navigation, for energy survey, and uh, any application where you want to get down to one meter accuracy or better. So that kind of architecture will show up several times in this course. So thank you for your attention on this uh, introductory snippet. Uh, next, uh, Professor Van Diglen will come back to you and uh, talk about uh, his feeling about why GPS is so deep and beautiful. Thank you.